What's up, my friend? Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays. Today, we are talking about something very near and dear to my heart, indie publishing. More specifically, why I chose to be an indie author and self-publish my debut novel, 100 Days of Sunlight. If you don't know anything about my novel, where have you been? It's a sweet YA contemporary about hope, healing, and getting back up when life knocks you down. And it's coming August 7th, 2019, and you can learn all the details in this video here. If you already saw that video, you might remember me mentioning that I'm actually going to be indie publishing this book. Some of you were surprised to hear that, and some of you didn't even know until after you finished ARC reading the book that I'm actually not traditionally published, and you were surprised to learn that. Which proves my point before I even make my point. <laughs> Self-publishing this year is not what it once was 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. That's what I want to talk about today, why I chose to go indie and why I would never ever go traditional. And hint, it's not for the money. Twenty years ago, you would hear the words self-publishing, and those words would immediately conjure an image in your mind of your beautiful books, boxes and boxes of your beautiful books rotting in your garage because you don't know how to sell them. But that was twenty years ago. It's 2019, my friend. Indie publishing has changed so much. We don't need the gatekeepers anymore, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Disclaimer, I am not here to bash traditional pub. I'm just here as a voice for indie pub and what it actually is. But before we continue, let me share with you the turning point for me when I decided that I could never ever traditionally publish. Several years ago, I stumbled upon a dude in the writing world named Mark Dawson. You might have heard of him. He's the author of the John Milton thriller series, which he sold over 2 million copies of as an indie author but he wasn't always an indie author. In fact, he was originally traditionally published and reached a point where he was literally going into bookstores, true story, and finding his book and moving it to the front of the shelves in hopes that somebody would buy it. Uh-huh. So then he decided to dive into the world of indie publishing and see if he could make that work for his book. And after some trial and error, he did. Mark now has a community called The Self-Publishing Formula, and he has a podcast by the same name. And I've devoured these articles and these podcasts so much and learned so much about indie publishing and how amazingly successful it can be. I've also heard many indies sharing their experiences and describing the signing of their book contract as the worst decision of their career. Yeesh! That was enough to get me really considering indie publishing. Now, some people go indie because of the money, because they've heard that it can be really profitable if done the right way. And yeah, it's comforting to know that through your own efforts and energy and time, you could possibly make your book more profitable than any publishing house in the world could. But that's not the reason I'm an indie. I'm an indie because of the control. <laughs> Here's the thing, when you sign a contract with a publisher, you are selling your book. One-time purchase. Most people don't think of it like that, but that's essentially what it is. If you're signing over the rights to your book, it is no longer all yours. And in a lot of cases, none of it's yours. Read the fine print. That contract is selling over the rights to your book, your work of art to said publisher who can package and produce and promote it any way they see fit or not. I've heard many a horror story of deals being signed and books falling through the cracks and never actually making it to the mass market. That's a big decision to make. And I'm not saying that I would never sign a contract with a publisher, but I've learned enough about the business now to know that if I did sign a contract, I would want a specialized lawyer to read that contract inside and out and understand it 110%. And even then I would only sell print rights. But back to what I like about indie publishing. You have control. You control everything. Of course, there are pros and cons to this. Pros? You decide when you publish. You get to choose or design your own book cover and title and blurb. You get control of promotion and advertising and follow-up materials and a million other things. Basically, you decide and control everything. Cons, you decide and control everything. It's a lot of work. Like, a lot of work. You won't have the ability or capacity to do everything, so you will have to hire some things out. 
which means making an investment. Keyword investment because this will pay off, but it's a lot of work. And you'll never be able to say, oh, I'm published by XYZ Publishing. Who cares? <laughs> Basically, that's what it comes down to. A lot of work, but full control. So is indie publishing for everyone? Um, yes. <laughs> but I don't wanna do all the work myself. Okay, fine. Hire someone to do it for you. Is that expensive? It depends, but full control is priceless. <laughs> and the return on investment is always a good thing too. I mean, I was recently listening to an interview with an indie author who had previously sold a series to, an, to a publishing house and got a six figure deal out of it. She thought it was pretty darn good. But now looking back, she says that she could have made way more money selling that series as an indie author. In fact, she was actually considering buying back the rights, like actually getting enough money to pay them what they paid her just to get her control back on that series. So for me, it's not about the money. It's about my books reaching their full potential and being in charge of that and not selling my child to somebody who does not see it as a work of art, but sees it as a product. And if this product doesn't bring them good business, they're not gonna burn the midnight oil to make it a success. <laughs> and you can't really blame them for seeing their business as a business and seeing your book as just a product that they sell. Like I said before, I'm not dissing traditional pub, but they have a job to do. And if your book doesn't affect their bottom line, they're not gonna put in the blood, sweat, and tears, and love that you would put in to make your book a success. Okay, now, I know there are success stories out there of traditionally published authors, obviously, but there are far, far more stories of writers being rejected, turned down, giving up on their hopes of being a writer, thinking they're not good enough to be published, and abandoning their dreams of becoming a successful author. And that is heartbreaking. But indie publishing is changing the game for writers. And that is why I am super proud to shout from the rooftops that I am an indie. Because I'm also a control freak. <laughs> I love to be in charge of things, and when it comes to my book, my art, I want to be the only person I can blame for not making it reach its full potential. I want to have the ability and the capacity to make my book a success, even if it takes a lot of time and effort. I'm willing to put in the time and effort because my stories matter so much to me. So that being said, I know you guys, a lot of you guys are also interested in indie publishing. If you're not in your team trad all the way, please do not take offense to anything I've said in this video. These are just my personal opinions and insights based on years of exploring both avenues and researching and reading articles and listening to podcasts and learning from authors who are way more experienced than I am. But here's the cool thing. I'm on this indie publishing journey for the first time and I'm learning so, so much and I want to share it with you. So I've already gotten a bunch of requests and comments and emails and DMs from you guys asking me to do videos on indie publishing and just how I'm going about getting my book out there in the world all by myself. So expect more videos about this in the future. If you're not into indie publishing at all, don't worry. It's not gonna totally take over my channel. We're still gonna talk a ton about writing, but I'm also looking forward to sharing my firsthand experience with you guys because for the indies out there and the future indies out there, it's time to go beyond the writing process and take your book to the next level. All right, comment below and tell me, are you indie or traditional? Are you thinking of going indie? or going traditional. Let's talk all things publishing in the comments below. Once again, thank you so much for all the love and support that you're showing my debut novel, 100 Days of Sunlight. And if you wanna be an ARC reader and you haven't signed up yet, there is still time. So go to netgalley.com slash pub slash Abby Emmons and request to read my book. Or check out this video for all the details and instructions. Smash that like button if you like this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and now publishing videos every Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on.